Cold weather records fell across the province today. The cold is going to continue. And tonight, a warning that snow is on the way. Meteorologist Claire Martin is watching for that. Claire, hope you're wearing your woolly jumper. You know, it is cold out here, Tony. Yes. To make matters worse, after dealing with a record-breakingly cold night last night, we're looking at snow as we get into tomorrow. Take a look around us. Well, this is the last time I think we'll have such a crystal clear, beautiful night. Uh, there is cloud on its way, and then there is snow on its way. Okay, let's talk about how much snow. This is when we last saw snow. We have to go back to January when we picked up 16 centimeters in the one-day snowfall record to break on Saturday 13.2 snow warnings currently in effect for Metro Vancouver and the Fraser Valley anywhere from 5 to 10 centimeters I'll talk about when we can expect to see the snow start in the city and how it's going to play out as we go through Sunday I'll have that in about 10 15 minutes Tony Gloria back to you thank you Claire you're welcome well, this cold weather has been a boon for our videographers. They are capturing lots of great images. Take this unusual sight, for example. These ducks are normally in the water at Stanley Park instead of walking on top of it. But with the cold spell, Lost Lagoon has turned into a skating rink of sorts. But it's not all fun and games. Those making their living outside have no choice but to bundle up and bear it. Our Stephanie Mercier has been looking at how workers are dealing with the deep freeze. Stephanie? Well, Gloria, uh, it might not qualify as cold if you're from anywhere else in the country or even anywhere else in the province, but minus 14 degrees with the wind chill, as Claire mentioned, that's record breaking here. But work still goes on, even outdoors. That's the number one question. Aren't you cold? Isn't it cold in there? Eli Raber says it's not so bad. He's got layers. Like there's my socks. Then I've got long johns on. I've got two pairs of long johns. And then I got my shirt, a sweater, another sweater, and then another sweater underneath. Layers are a consistent theme among those working in the chill. One, two, eight, three. Four. Mahmoud Mahtasep spends eight hours every day standing outside. I try to walk and moving. These iron workers are even more bundled. How many layers are you wearing? Uh, five. So that's three sweaters, two t shirts, and a long sleeve t shirt. So that's seven. But they say it's not so bad as long as you keep moving. And even cold sun, they say, is far better than the rain. But if you thought it was bad here, the situation is even worse south of the border. A late winter storm pounded Washington state, piling up more than a foot of snow in places and bringing near whiteout conditions just outside Seattle. But brace yourself, that's headed this way. Here you go. Thank you. And the forecast has this man taking action on Twitter. We've got toques, we've got jackets, we've got fleeces, we've got blankets. Shane Gibson organized a heat up, tweet up, getting people to bring anything warm to the downtown east side. It's nice to be able to write a check, uh, but it's also, I think, important that people use their time uh, and your social graph, which is your online influence, to contribute and help community. So, Stephanie, what is the city doing to prepare for the coming snow? Well, I talked to Murray Whiteman, the street operations manager for the city, and he says they're going to have a couple of trucks on the tonight, but mostly just as a precaution because the roads have actually been quite bare and dry because of the cold. Uh, they'll bring in a full complement of trucks tomorrow morning starting at 7 to deal with any possible snowfall, and he does say that they have some workers on, to, on standby tonight in case anything changes. Gloria? Stephanie, thank you. Live at Queen Elizabeth Park. The corporation that runs BC Place says the proposal for a new casino must be approved. If not, the company won't have enough money to pay for the stadium's new roof. And as Susanna De Silva reports, opponents of the casino say the public should have known about this a long time ago. It has already changed the city's landscape. Construction is months and hundreds of millions of dollars in. But now the BC Pavilion Corporation, or PAVCO, the company that runs BC Place, has raised the stakes, telling the city to approve its plans or else. The proposal is for a Las Vegas-style casino and entertainment complex around the stadium, including an expanded Edgewater Casino, the revenues from which PAVCO says it needs to help pay back a $150 million loan from the province as in taxpayers, and it says no expansion would mean they wouldn't have enough money, something Pavco says wasn't even considered when the plans for the new roof went ahead. I think that uh, the people of Vancouver are making it very clear that they do not like this proposal. 
But the battle lines are being drawn. A group called Vancouver Not Vegas has been adding to a list of prominent Vancouverites opposed to the project, while earlier this week, proponents sent out their own list of those in favour of the plan. Vancouver has so much more to offer, and people that will come here will not just come for the casino. Both sides have crammed meetings about the project, and twice the city's public hearings were put off. Now opponents say Pavco is feeling the public pressure. A week before this process goes to public hearing, now we get the threats. I think Mr. Podmore is just basically putting it on the table in terms of what the consequences might be, and I think council needs to be made aware of that. City Council already has 125 people signed up to speak on the proposal at the public hearing on March 7th. Susanna De Silva, CBC News, Vancouver. The Ski Report is brought to you by Delta Sun Peaks. Visit deltasunpeaksresort.com this winter and your third night is free. the cold commute home has you wishing for a sun-filled holiday, we've got a tip for finding the best deal. Forget about spending hours combing through travel site search results. As Teresa Lalonde discovered, the secret to finding discount holidays may involve a simple trip to your local travel agent. This is the time of the year when people, even in southwestern BC, throw their hands in the air and say, I am sick of wearing mitts. Deal hunters pour over websites and windows. I've never gone to a travel agent. I don't think I ever will. Online. And why do you book online rather than go to an agent? Uh, it's cheaper, I think. I guess. You'd probably get a better deal online, but I'm not sure. Not sure. Why? Because people haven't compared lately. We chose two warm places. First, Vegas. 1268 per, 1268 per person. 1268 per person. What's the MGM gram? You beat it by 200 bucks. Yeah. We also compare rates for Riviera Maya, Mexico, between Travelocity, Expedia, and his system. This time, the online travel sites won by several hundred dollars. But after 15 minutes of searching, Chen found the same price. You look at Expedia and you look at that and says, oh, there's no different. It is not truly something unique and special to them that they can only offer. It used to be the opposite in the early days of online sites when airlines sold them blocks of seats at a special price. Chen says they've stopped. I think the airlines started to look at the, the business models where if they were beholden to these big players, then they had less control over their own product. This doesn't mean people are racing back to agents. People like the convenience and control of booking online. But Chen tells clients to bring those quotes to him to match or better. Other travel agencies are also promising to do the same thing. Teresa Lalonde, CBC News, Vancouver. Well, it's Friday night and the weekend beckons and a snow alert goes up. Okay. Snow warning, snow alert. I know, what a party pooper I am. <laughs> you <party> are. <laughs> you know, Friday, everybody's off and yeah, the snow's in the forecast. Uh, temperatures, thanks very much, guys. Temperatures today struggled, sitting at minus two right now. And yeah, we've been dealing with a bit of a wind chill effect for much of the day. Nothing like they're seeing in through Alberta, but yeah, it's approaching the mid minus teen mark in the interior. But enough of that. Take a look outside. This is probably the last time we'll see a gloriously blue sky for a while. Why? Well, we've got snow warnings to deal with. And yeah, we've got cloud making its way in towards our area. Uh, snow warnings already in effect. Parts of the central coast, uh, the McGregor region, and yes, down from Metro Vancouver and the valley. We've got a system dropping its way into our area from the north and west. So the snow is actually going to come at us from that direction. I really don't think we'll see it until about lunchtime tomorrow, but then as we go through the day, we're going to see the snow making its way in. That map just wants to repeat, just to make it even worse. The snow is going to linger through the overnight period, and then it's going to continue as we go into tomorrow, but uh, you know, as we go into Sunday. But the temperature will rise, so it'll turn to rain eventually. Till then, we're dealing with snow, I'd say, from noon onwards, right through the overnight period into Sunday morning. How much snow? Let's go for a broad brush, sort of two to four, maybe two to five centimeters in the city, much higher amounts as you go up the mountains towards the North Shore Mountains. Into Sunday, it'll gradually turn to rain as we go through the day. And then here's the good news. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we get back into a more typical scenario, warm weather, wet and gray. Oh, bring back the clear blue skies. I will take it, yes.
Jody's in with sports today. I am, and a little homage to uh, your passion, Claire, with running. I've got oh. something special for you in our oh play my. of the day. It'll ponder the question, when have you gone too far with your iPhone? Mm. Also coming up on the serious side, of course, we'll check in on the status of your NHL leading Vancouver Canucks as they come off a near disaster against the Blues last night. But they pull it out. Sports is up next. Arthi polls in the newsroom now with a look at what's coming up on CBC News Vancouver late night. Arthi? Well, it's just it's a disturbing story. The body of a Vancouver woman, Debbie McKean, was found in her bed at a Mexico hotel room on Monday. McKean is a mother of five. Hotel staff found the body, and there are some reports out of Mexico suggesting there may have been a gas leak in the hotel. So we will be looking into that tonight, plus any breaking news right here at 1055. Arthi, thank you. Yeah, and let's look at sports now with Jody. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, fans can't get enough of the NHL leading Vancouver Canucks as they ride that ebb and flow of what is a very long NHL season. The club with the night off tonight after pulling one out of the hat last night where they managed to beat the St. Louis Blues. There Early on, it looked catch. pretty Better textbook. The Sedins setting up Samuelson. And they scores, etc. The home team had a nice two goals to none lead after the opening 20 minutes, but the wheels came almost completely off in the second as there were too many blue jerseys standing around while the Blues players tied things up. In the end, it worked to the home team's favor. Manny Maholtra netted the game winner while backup Corey Schneider took the W, stopping 28 of 30 shots in Vancouver's 3 2 victory. Yes, they've alternated wins and losses in their last eight games, and the Canucks will have to be on their game for the visit from the Bruins tomorrow night. Game obviously a homecoming for former Vancouver Giants stud Milan Lucic. That will be right here on CBC as the Canucks do host the Boston Bruins on Hockey Night in Canada. Puck drop is 7 o'clock, and the love for Lucic will actually begin tonight. Vancouver Giants' 10th anniversary celebrations continue. The final Giant Alumni Night of the Year is at 7.30 this evening at the Coliseum, and the former Memorial Cup MVP will be honored prior to the Giants game against, ironically enough, the Chilliwack Bruins. Yes, yes. So, uh, and now this might be taking streaming live to an extreme. The demand to run the Tokyo Marathon is so great that very few get the chance. So Joseph Tame of Hereford, England, calls himself a digital media producer, figured he'd give the marathon experience to everyone who can't run the race. File this under the going the extra mile with your iPhone. So, Claire, you're a runner. Perhaps we can suit you up. I think that's kind of cool. Right? We'll watch for you on the seawall. Okay. There she goes. That's right. I like the little, you know, fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, make sure you're, you're moving. You're just liable to take off if you go the Well, yeah, it goes a bit so. fast. I just, yeah. <laughs> Not enough body weight to hold me down sometimes. <laughs> we do have a reminder that we will be here live tomorrow and the Liberal Convention as, as party members select their new leader and, of course, the new Premier of British Columbia. Our Legislative Bureau Chief, Stephen Smart, will bring us the latest from the convention floor. And another Stephen, CBC Radio Stephen Quinn, will head up an all-star panel of political analysts. Yes, it all gets underway at 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. You can watch us on Czech TV or on CBC News Network. Uh, listen in on CBC Radio. Take part in the conversation by joining our webcast on cbc.ca slash bc. And we hope you join us tomorrow night at 6. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you then. Good night. Good night. Good night.